there interwebs. I hope you're all doing well. So I just wanted to take a minute to kind of describe and then laugh about a weird situation that I am finding myself in recently regarding my relationship to Matt Walsh's What is a Woman film, uh, the Daily Wire host Matt Walsh's uh, film that he put out uh, about a year ago that was an anti-transgender hate propaganda piece that has been getting uh, renewed attention recently given that Elon Musk himself has been uh, promoting it on Twitter and allowing the film to air in full on that platform. And this situation is uh, kind of weird and uh, interesting and telling to me, and I just kind of needed to go over it with you because it's just been fascinating to kind of watch uh, happen in front of my very eyes regarding me. And I think it's also telling in terms of how anti-trans folks and right-wing folks and Matt Walsh fans, and again, sadly, that Venn diagram is pretty much a circle at this point, react to trans people speaking up about our own issues and talking about our own issues in any way that allows us to have a platform to be able to do so. So to give you the quick little backstory, as many of you may already know, uh, after that film came out about a year ago, I made a four hour long debunking video that went through every single piece of disinformation throughout the film, pointed out why it was, you know, deliberately misconstruing the facts or interviews and things like that throughout the film, as well as how the film was going about trying to create a uh, hatred towards transgender people and direct its audience to try to enact violence, both systemic, personal, and just individual, uh, against against transgender people, and also how the film was not about trying to convince anybody uh, of transgender people, but really play to uh, the Daily Wire type of audience that has already been primed by months and years of anti-transgender rhetoric to sort of uh, give them uh, more specific and a singular place to uh, find the disinformation that they wish to go out and then spew about transgender people that is becoming more and more prominent and more and more solidified over the past few years. Like, the movie is just meant to sort of, like, coagulate all these different narratives that have been going around around trans people the past few years and sort of, like, put it in a two-hour movie to make it easy and sellable to their audience to say, here's the things that you need to say to hate on transgender people. It really was just a film to just propagandize uh, and weaponize in that specific way. And because anti-transgender hate has become the sort of party platform for right-wing ghouls recently to try to distract from the actual issues that need to be addressing and sort of build up their bases on, you know, creating a scapegoat and outgroup to attack, uh, this has led to the what, what is a woman film to get a lot of attention because it is sort of like coalescing all these different narratives around transgender people. Now, how I relate to what's been going on recently is not only did I do that four-hour debunking, but just something that I uh, did extra to push back against the film was I actually took my uh, four-hour video review and submitted it as my official review for the film over on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am actually, because I do uh, you know film criticism and film reviews both on this channel and my other channel, I am actually technically an official uh, critic over on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm not slumming it with all of you in those lebian audience review score sections i'm an official fancy critic which really in actuality means that i like submitted a form to rotten tomatoes like forever ago and said hey look i have a minor platform and i review movies mostly star trek nonsense uh can i can i get a critic thing and rotten tomatoes was like eh yeah sure uh, so, so now I can submit reviews officially uh, on the Rotten Tomatoes platform. Um, and that, that's really about the extent of that process for being on there. And so I can submit for anything, uh, but I submitted my review to uh, the What is a Woman film over on Rotten Tomatoes. So if you go and look over at the Rotten Re Tomatoes review score over on, um, you'll find that it's me and then five other critics. And the five other critics who all gave the movie a fresh rating are like Christian and right-wing newspapers that I think like have pretty much smaller followings than I do, which is saying something and I kind of understand that right like I said again the movie was meant to sort of be a very insular thing to the right-wing uh, audience that they were trying to market the film to so of course it didn't hit any mainstream movie critics because what mainstream movie critic would want to even waste their time watching and reviewing the film and so the movie currently sits at I think like an 83% over on Rotten Tomatoes with my one review being the sole negative review that knocked it down from 100% now as many people know over the past few years, a lot of like right-wing groups like to use Rotten Tomatoes as some sort of battleground of the culture war. Many people will go and review bomb like Disney movies for having a black woman in it or whatever and then take that back as like proof of like fans hate the movie. When in actuality, like those scores are pretty manipulatable, especially the audience review score, because again, you can just sort of direct your audiences to go and review it and then it sort of becomes this confirmation bias that they create saying, look, look, fans hate it or fans love the thing because of whatever reason. 
And that is the case that's been going on with Matt Walsh's What is a Woman film. Recently, after Elon Musk promoted the movie, Matt Walsh tweeted about like, hey, look, go over and review it on Rotten Tomatoes, the audience review score. And, uh, you know, it's gone from like, I think it was like two or 3,000 reviews at the time that uh, he posted that to like now 10,000 reviews or whatever, because he's directing his audience to go there. And again, he's using that like, oh, everyone loves it and reviews it or whatever. Again, creating this culture war antagonistic nonsense. But because of that, and because I am the singular negative review of the film from actual official critics that can go and do that on, on that channel, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about me from Matt Walsh's audience uh, because of that. Uh, so I've been seeing on Twitter some people saying like, well, look, the one negative reviewer of the film is a person named Jesse Gender, so I think you're all right. Uh, and a lot of them sort of are even coming to my uh, review of the film on YouTube and sort of saying this sort of things like, well, I get it. I see you. Of course you can't be objective. This gross... And they're saying the worst things to you, like groomer, pedophile, blah, 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 um, all that sort of nonsense at me. Uh, and it just, again, this argument that you can't be objective if you're a trans person talking about your own body, but someone like Chris Christian fascist Matt Walsh can, uh, you know, speak objectively about trans people as if there's like this idea of like a default neutral objectivity that anyone can have, which is very much rooted in white supremacy, heteronormativity, uh, and all of these sort of, uh, you know, things. And I'll be frank, a lot of it has been, you know, kind of mentally just draining to just see again a wave of hate stuff come at the film but I also know that the film is getting uh, my review specifically is getting uh, seen by people and it is helping them learn information it's just the hate the haters are always the ones that are going to be the most vocal so it sucks and it sucks to get that harassment again uh, it just goes to show that you know trans people who speak up about issues are not just facing one wave of harassment but ongoing ones I faced ongoing harassment campaigns you know from the initial time I posted up review then JK Rowling da 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 and that's probably only going to get worse if at my my platform continues to grow and also transphobia continues to grow it's not exactly fun it's not great for the mental health uh but you know i'm trying my best to stay healthy and focus on on the positives and stuff but one thing of course the police are ruining my video Anyway, sorry for the sirens there. I live in a city, so you deal with that. And another thing with all of this, too, that has been interesting to see is people trying to, like, ruin my career because I'm simply a trans person, you know, stating my opinion about a movie. There are some people that have even written into Rotten Tomatoes to get me removed from the platform. And it goes to show the free speech crowd doesn't really like actual free speech. They just like it when they can say their horrific, you know bigoted, ghoulish nonsense. Uh, and when a trans person speaks up about our own issues and our own thoughts, oh, that person needs to be silenced and taken and removed from the platform because they're being hateful. But two other things that have also come up in this uh, sort of discourse about me, both in my comments and on Twitter towards Matt Walsh, that I've been thinking about recently is also this idea, again, that I have been uncivil to Matt Walsh. You know, I make a couple jokes about Matt Walsh's beard in that video, which is a choice that he makes. Like, being trans is not a choice. I am trans because that's who I am. But Matt Walsh having uh, chosen to have a mid beard and groom himself that way that is a choice that he made that is a lifestyle choice that he made um, but I make a couple jokes at his beard's expense and because of that I'm uh, you know attacking him and I'm being uncivil Matt Walsh is just asking questions uh, but you're attacking his his personality and none of these people have any self-awareness that like Matt Walsh continually sexualizes transgender people's bodies calls us pedophiles uh, because that is seen as natural and normal by a society to sexualize a trans person's body and fetishize and call us a fetish call us pedophilic call us a you know a sexualized person uh just for existing is seen as normal but me making jokes about his beard is somehow you know uh insulting him as a person uh re instead of just you know you know, making mildly bad jokes at his grooming habit, you know? And so it's this constant, like, at demands of civility on my part to someone who is causing, you know, violence against me and other people like me. Uh, it's sort of that calls for civility. And then also this other thing of, and this tweet that's on screen right now kind of showcases this uh, most clearly, how people just don't really understand how these system works. I mean, the tweet that you see on screen right now, this person is, like, saying, how does it feel that, like, people rated 83% of the company that you work for? Like, assuming that I worked for Rotten tomatoes like assuming that like there wasn't just a heavily weighted bias on rotten tomatoes because of the people that chose to review it like completely not understanding how the system works and then just using that uh lack of understanding to then go out and attack a transgender person
it just is somewhat frustrating to just see how this constantly happens all the time where like a lot of hatred and bigotry comes from people just not understanding how many of these systems work systems of you know government white supremacy heteronormativity uh just systems of rotten tomatoes it works and then you like just having this self-confidence of like oh i know how it works so fuck you you awful person and just like it's it's both frustrating uh to watch but also you have to kind of laugh at it because it's sort of like Y'all really just don't know. This hate just comes from a, just a lot of ignorance. And that is, uh, again, frustrating, but somewhat affirming in some cases. Because it's like, man, just teaching and trying to help people grow is, is the best thing to do to help break down this stuff. It, it, it's not always possible. And sometimes you just have to punch people in order to fight back because you're not going to have the time to be able to educate them in order to, while trying to protect yourself, protect those who need the help. But it also is just nice to know that, like, a lot of it's just ignorance and people taking advantage of ignorance. And so to end out, there's so much more I could say about this situation, but the situation specifically with this Rotten Tomatoes review stuff has just been, you know, a microcosm of a lot of different things and issues that I've been talking about. And a lot of people have been talking about for a very long time about, you know, all of these issues surrounding anti-transgender hate in this country. And just sort of seeing it in microcosm has been really fascinating to me, particularly to just sort of watch unfold just and, and happen all over again months later now that, you know, Matt Walsh is trying to stoke the fires even more of anti-trans hate and build up his brand off of a film that is uh, rather shitty. And I stand by my Rotten Tomatoes review and I would have many, many more words to say about it if Rotten Tomatoes would uh, let me limit the number of letters uh, that I could say it or uh, censor certain things that I could say there. Uh, but I stand by that review. They want you to just constantly stoke the fires of this culture war nonsense. They want you to like go and hate on his film because then Matt Walsh will then go and say like, look, the woke critics are trying to attack me and cancel me. Um, I just did it because it was like, I just didn't want it to have 100%. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you don't want to feed into the nonsense. We don't feed into their bad battleground we make our own battlegrounds uh so yeah who gives a shit about his Rotten Tomato score, I just found it particularly fascinating the dynamics that were coming out about it because uh, it's sort of indicative of a lot of different things. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to say. Hope you're all taking care of yourselves and live long and prosper, everybody.